G'day there. You're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a really quick video, just an add-in that I think is worth being aware of, especially if you're a model or BIM manager and you're using a lot of add-ins uh, which can often clash with each other, or maybe you're developing plugins um, or add-ins for Revit and you need to test them without other things. So in this case, this, this plugin is built by Stantec and shared for free. Um, and in this case, it's essentially going to enable and disable plugins in different versions of Revit. Um, so very quick video, let's have a look at it. So this tool can actually be found at a link that I'll put in the description below. In this case, it's on a blog article by Stantec. Now this is actually from 2016. It's been around for quite a while. Um, I'd like to thank Robert Manor and Stantec for actually sharing this. I think it's great. Um, good to see that sort of initiative in the industry, especially from such a large company. Um, so in this case, um, if you scroll down in the article, you'll find the link to a Bitbucket, which is essentially a little bit like a, a GitHub in principle. Um, you just click on download repository, it's going to download a zip file. In this case, I'm on Firefox, so it's not going to show me the download, it's just going to take it straight to my downloads folder. And in this case, if you unzip it, you're going to find a whole bunch of files. Now really, all you need to do is make sure, first of all, that Revit is closed. I do recommend running this in the closed state. And if you go to Add-in Manager, Bin, Debug, you can run the Add-in Manager.exe. It's going to open up the program straight away with no install required. So, you know, really cool that they developed it this way. Obviously, really simple for deployment. Now, in this case, I can see every single add-in um, that is present in my add-ins folders for all the versions of Revit I have installed. So, in this case, um, if I go to C, Program Data, Autodesk, Revit, Add-ins, this is where I'll find a majority of the add-in files that it's retrieving. Um, in this case, if I go to say 2020, um, I can see I have a whole bunch of add-in files. Now these are what get loaded uh, when you're in Revit in order to run add-ins successfully. So all this plugin actually does is just rename the add-in file so that it's no longer found by Revit. So in this case, if I just choose maybe 2020, and let's just pick a, an add-in that we can see here, for example, um, maybe Rhino Insight Revit. And I pick Rhino Insight Revit. In this case, I just toggle it to disabled. If I have a look for it now, notice it's now got it disabled after it. So a lot of programmers actually already use this trick when they're developing applications in Revit um, so that just add-ins don't actually load so they can debug other ones more easily. Um, so in this case, I might just pick maybe a couple more. So I'll disable Pro Sheets, um, I'll disable Ideate, I'll disable Avail, and I'll disable Enscape. But I'll keep a few of them here, such as Speckle and Nonica. Um, and in this case, I'll just keep these disabled ones here. So in this case, I'm also just going to reopen Revit, and I should now find that these add-ins won't actually load. Uh, this can be really handy when you're not doing a task that involves add-ins as well, um, but I do not recommend usually launching this tool for users that don't understand how it works, because if you do close add-ins whilst Revit is open, sometimes it can crash or cause undesirable behavior um, when Revit doesn't quite know how to handle what's happening in the background. This is really something that should be done uh, whilst your session of Revit is shut. Uh, but I should now find if I just open up a new model, um, in this case, I can see that pretty much all the add-ins I didn't tell to go away are turned off. Um, now, something else to be really careful with as well is um, just be careful when you do this that you don't forget to re-enable your add-ins because that can be a little bit confusing when you might think you don't have an add-in installed. Um, in this case, I'm going to select all disabled and just re-enable them. So it's really handy. It's actually quite useful as a content creator as well. If I'm ever doing a tutorial and I don't want people to really focus on my add-ins on the ribbon, um, I can use this to just temporarily disable um, add-ins that I don't want to show. Or if I'm doing a promo video for a company and maybe one of their competitors is, is on my admin tab, obviously that doesn't look great for them. So sometimes I'll disable it for those sort of presentations as well. But I hope that's useful and enjoy enabling and, and re-enabling your add-ins, I guess, and making Revit that little bit easier to work with. So I hope that was a useful thing to be aware of. I um, mainly just wanted to spread it because a lot of people don't seem to be aware of it. And obviously it's free, so more than happy to promote it. Anyway, I look forward to seeing you in future similar videos. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, feel free to do so. Take care. Bye.